Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by the half-life of a radioactive isotope. You should then be able to determine the half-life of a radioactive isotope. And finally, you should be able to calculate the decrease in radioactive count rate after a given number of half-lives. That last statement applies only to higher tier students. Over the last few videos, we've been looking at radioactive decay. We saw that radioactive isotopes release radiation from the nucleus of their atoms. Remember that scientists cannot predict when a nucleus will decay, and that's because decay is a random process. In this video, we're looking at the idea of half-life, so let's get started. The half-life of a radioactive isotope is the time it takes for the number of nuclei of the isotope in a sample to halve. Now, that sounds a bit tricky, but the actual idea is quite straightforward. I'm showing you here a sample of a radioactive isotope. The white circles represent the nuclei, and when a nucleus decays, I'm going to show that by turning it red. So, as you can see, the nuclei are decaying. Remember that this is a random process. Sometimes there's a relatively long period where no nucleus decays, and other times several nuclei will decay in a short period. So scientists cannot say when any individual nucleus will decay. Instead, scientists determine the time it takes for half the original nuclei to decay, and that's the half-life. Now, this isotope has a relatively long half-life. We can tell that because it's decaying relatively slowly. It will take a long time for the number of nuclei of the original isotope to halve. Here's a different radioactive isotope, and this one has a relatively short half-life. We can tell that because the nuclei are decaying at a faster rate. That means it won't take long for the number of nuclei of the original isotope to halve. Now, there is another definition for half-life, which I'm showing you here. The half-life is also the time it takes for the count rate or the activity from a sample containing the isotope to fall to half its initial level. And as we saw before, the count rate is the number of decays per second recorded by a detector, such as a Geiger Muller tube. Now, you could be asked to work out the half-life of an isotope from a graph such as this one. This shows how the number of undecayed nuclei remaining in a sample of isotope changes with time. We're starting with 1,000 undecayed nuclei, and we need to find the time it takes for this to half. Half of 1,000 is 500. Looking at the graph, we can see that it takes 20 minutes for the number of nuclei to fall from 1,000 to 500. So the half-life is 20 minutes. After another 20 minutes, we can see that the number of undecayed nuclei has fallen by half again, to 250. Now, you could also be asked to calculate the decrease in count rate after a given number of half-lives. Here's a typical question. A radioactive isotope has a half-life of 15 days and an initial count rate of 200 counts per second. Determine the count rate after 45 days. Now, remember that after each half-life, the count rate will have halved. The half-life is 15 days, so 45 days is three half-lives. That means that the count rate will have halved three times. So the initial count rate is 200 counts per second. After 15 days, it will have halved to 100. 15 days after that, it will have halved again to 50. And finally, 15 days later, it will have halved again to 25 counts per second. Remember that you'll find plenty of questions on half-life in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what's meant by the half-life of a radioactive isotope. You should then be able to determine the half-life of a radioactive isotope. And finally, you should be able to calculate the decrease in radioactive count rate after a given number of half-lives.